Jesus being the light of the world, because we're looking at Christmas light. And um, I wonder, just to show of hands, how many of you have decorated your house and you've got lights in your houses? We've all got lights in the house. Yeah, we have as well, yeah. Anybody decorated the outside of their house? Oh, okay. If you if you want to see some decorations that look a bit like black poly illuminations, uh, go across the main road and drive onto our estate, Shipley View. Uh, there are so many lights. In fact, we feel like the bar humbug house because we haven't got lights outside because <laughs> we can't work out how to put them up and all that. But um, yes, it's very pretty, man, where we live. It's it's so many lights. And, um, and I guess, you know, it's not surprising because Christmas is a, a festival that we celebrate, don't we? Uh, in wintertime when there's lots of dark nights, you know, the, the days are short. Um, but if you think about uh, dark and light, they're also very powerful images of um, the spiritual life as well, aren't they? So today I want to uh, read you a passage from the Bible, which is really, really famous. And I've just put my Bible over there because I'm reading it today from um, the Amplified Version, um, which I've got online, so I printed it out here. So just so you know, I am reading from the Bible, but it's on the paper. And um, I've, read, I've got it from the Amplified Version because sometimes when the passage is really familiar, it's so familiar we miss it. Mm. And I just wanted to read it to you in a different way so that you just kind of get the impact a little bit more again today. So this is John, uh, John 1. So John we know was Jesus' disciple and then he's writing about what happened afterwards. And the first thing he does is start off by telling us who Jesus really was. And so I'm going to read the passage. And then there's an invitation for you today to do what um, Bell was asking the beast to do, come into the light. Okay, so here we go. In the beginning, before all time, was the word Christ. And the word was with God, and the word was God himself. He was continu continually existing in the beginning, co-eternally with God. All things were made and came into existence through him. And without him, not even one thing was made that has come into being. In him was life and the power to bestow life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, and the darkness did not understand it, or overpower it, or appropriate it, or absorb it, and is unreceptive to it. Mm -hmm. Reads quite differently, doesn't it, <laughs> when you read it like that, but it's also very powerful, isn't it? And, um, and it made me think, I don't know if any of you here have ever been in a very dark place, but I know um, when I was teaching we used to take school parties to the caves um, in the Peak District, and there's always a point where they turn off all the lights. Mm -hmm. And it is so dark, you literally, if you've got your hand here, you can't see it, it's so dark, there's no dark. Um, there's no light at all, sorry, it's completely dark. And, uh, and I don't know, maybe if you've been in the country, uh, in the countryside, um, we stayed with some uh, relatives down in Cornwall, and uh, there's not street lamps around. So when you turn off the lights at night, it's really dark. <laughs> and you're just like, I don't like it, to be honest. I like a bit of light, you know, outside. I like to be able to see. Uh, my, my family laugh at me that when we go stay anywhere, I always have to leave the curtains with a little chink so that I can see, because <laughs> I don't like it being completely dark. But, um, yeah, darkness is, you know, it can be, like, tangible, can't it? Um, but even in the darkest of places, even the smallest of light can actually start to dispel the darkness, can't it? My little chink of the curtains, that's the tiniest bit of light from outside maybe, from the street lamp or something, starts the dark to go away a little bit, doesn't it? Because we need light, because without light we can come to harm. So if you think about your house and, uh, you know, winter time and it's evening and then the power goes. <coughs> Just think about all the things that suddenly become a hazard in your house because you can't see. There's things to trip over, there's things you might fall down, like stairs. Uh, we need light, don't we? Light helps us, light protects us, light shows us the way. And, uh, and it's also true in the way that we live our lives. And, um, you know, just like our starter game, the more light we have, uh, the better we can interpret, the better we can understand and the more we can see what's going on around us. And it helps us to make the right choices in our lives as well. And uh, when we have light, we can see the way ahead. 
and we, we can see clearly what's right to do and what's wrong to do and we can make better moral choices as well and that's what Jesus came to do <clears throat> so he came uh, into the world and he came to show us what a righteous life looks like a life that is pleasing to God and it wasn't a, you know, a lot of people think that God, uh, that Jesus came and it's don't do this and don't do that and don't do the other. But actually, Jesus came to say, do this, because this brings you into the light. Do this, because this is pleasing to God. And this is a merciful thing to do. Why don't you do this thing? And so he comes to show us a better way. And Jesus himself said, John 8, verse 12, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. When you think about your house plunged into darkness by a power cut, you know, we need the light of life, don't we? We need light to see where we're going. So Jesus came and he set an example for us to follow. And he, he lived a life where he did good to others. And he healed people, he listened to people, he set them free from the things that bound them. And where there was sickness, he brought life. Even when there was death, he raised people from death into life. And uh, where there was bondage, he brought people out into freedom. And you know, Jesus lived in a small country, and he never left it in his lifetime. And yet, Isaiah the prophet, um, he said this about Jesus, I will also make you a light for the Gentiles, that my salvation will reach the ends of the earth. That's Isaiah 49 verse 6. And the Gentiles were those who weren't Jew, Jewish believers. So they were everybody else, basically. So that means you, that means me. So Jesus came. That was his mandate from God. He came to be a light for every single person in the world. And, you know, you hear a lot of people, and they feel like their life is maybe worthless. They, they can't see the point. Uh, they feel they have no hope. They feel there's, you know, why have I even got life? But Jesus came to give us hope, to give us life, to give us life with purpose, and uh, to give meaning to our lives. And, it, and it, even the negative things, if we would um, offer them to Jesus, even those negative things become a positive, because somewhere down the line, there's going to be somebody else that's going through something that you went through, and you're going to be able to say, do you know, I was there, but God really helped me, and he really touched me, and he really, this is what he did for me. And your message, your witness, will just really touch somebody else. And you know, maybe Jesus is speaking to some of you now, and he's saying to you, come into the light. And we have to come into the light, don't we? You know, that's what Beauty and the Beast there, Belle's saying to the Beast, come into the light. I, I want to see all of you. And you know, the Beast isn't very keen. You see him very tentatively putting his feet out, you know, like, I'm not very keen, because I know what they'll do when they see me, they'll go, ha! And she did, didn't she? I, I want to tell you, Jesus will not do that to you. <laughs> Jesus welcomes us. But there is also something of the fact that as the beast came into the light, was fully seen and fully known by Belle, then she could love him. And as she loved him, he was changed and transformed. And as we come into the light of Jesus... And as we are fully known by Jesus, all the good bits, but all the bad bits that we'd rather hide away, as we allow Jesus to see those and deal with those, we, we get transformed by him, by his love and by his light. And that's what he does. And we can be, you know, like Belle transformed the beast by her love. We can come to Jesus and Jesus transforms us by his light. And maybe you're thinking, well, I'm already in the light. I've already made that choice. I'm already walking with Jesus. And that's great because that brings me to my second point. And that is, if the light of Jesus is living in you, then the darkness cannot overcome it. That light cannot be extinguished or put out or overcome by the darkness. You see, darkness doesn't understand light. It can't anticipate or second guess the actions of somebody who's walking in the light because it doesn't understand them. Um, maybe you've seen the Narnia films. Anybody here watch the Narnia films? Yeah? Uh, in the Narnia films, um, the white witch thinks that she's going to kill Aslan. 
and that Aslan will be dead forever. But she doesn't understand that he is sacrificing himself. And actually that act of love, he's going to be resurrected again. She can't understand it. She can't anticipate it. She doesn't realise what's happening. It, they call it the deep magic, don't they, in Narnia? But that's what Jesus did for us, isn't it? He sacrificed himself. His love transforms us. And that's what husbands do for wives, that's what parents do for children, that's what brothers do for sisters, that's what Christian brothers and sisters in our family do for one another, isn't it? That we sacrifice for one another because of love. And that love is transformative and that light shines when we do those things. Darkness cannot understand it, it cannot overpower it, it cannot overcome it. Darkness cannot appropriate light, that was interesting reading, wasn't it, from um, the Amplified Bible, because the moment darkness tries to take hold of light, the light starts to shine, doesn't it? And it's not dark anymore, because the light starts to shine. So it can't appropriate it. The darkness recedes the minute it tries to take hold of it. So whatever circumstances we face, or have faced, whatever difficulties lie before us, or will lie before us, if we're walking in the light of Jesus, and we have his Holy Spirit within us, then we cannot be overcome. And yes, we might get sick, but God's light will shine through even in our sickness. And uh, yeah, we will face hard times. None of us here, as, as you know, we've all been through hard times. But the light of Jesus will shine even through those times. And even ultimately, when the day comes when we face death, the light of Jesus is there to bring us resurrection life. Mm. So the light of Jesus is really good news because the life of Jesus is really good news. And so I just want to encourage you today and urge you today to keep walking in the light. And don't let darkness throw you off course. And don't be swayed by the culture of the times. You know, find the truth in God's word and live by that truth. And be rooted in Jesus and empowered by his Holy Spirit. You know, that means you do have a responsibility to read your Bible for yourself. It means you do have a responsibility to make an effort to grow in the things of God. You know, coming to church is growing in the things of God. It's, it's been around others who also are walking in God. And, uh, and it's an encouragement and it builds you up. And as you worship, it builds you up in God. And, you know, going and doing Bible study all builds you up. There's wonderful Christian books you can buy that will build your faith and strengthen your faith. It means taking time out. If, if you hear God prompting you to do something, it means actually obeying those promptings. So that means you've got to learn to know the voice of God, doesn't it? And the only way you learn to know the voice of God is to step out into those promptings. <laughs> and sometimes we get it wrong. And we get it wrong. So then we need grace to extend to one another, don't we? Well, we thought that was God, but sorry, I, I got that wrong. But mainly, I think... Very often, if we think God is prompting us and we have that real inner conviction, then he is. And we just need to step out into it. And it also means that the Lord expects us to live a life of moral integrity. You know what I said about your phones and the quiz? <laughs> That's integrity, isn't it? You know? uh, actually, if you cheat and you use your phone, who are you really cheating? Only yourself, actually, aren't you? God expects us to live a life that is righteous because we're his ambassadors here on the earth, aren't we? But you, the good news about all this is we don't have to do it in our own strength because we have the Holy Spirit living within us to help us. And so we need to be filled with his Spirit daily. And, uh, and it's the Holy Spirit who gives us the strength and the de desire and the will to walk in God's ways. And it's him that enables us to do it. Um, and it's the light within is the light of the Holy Spirit living within us. So we need to learn to hear, to listen, and to yield to his ways. I want to end um, some words from Philippians 2. Um, it says this. This is a good one. Do everything without grumbling or arguing. <laughs> do we ever grumble? No. Do we ever argue? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> do everything without grumbling or arguing so that, why, you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then, listen to this, this is the good bit, 
You will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. So as we allow the light from outside that's come into the world to live within our hearts, and as we obey and yield and surrender to him, we ourselves become a light to others. Mm. Isn't that amazing? Mm. That is amazing, isn't it? So I just want to encourage you today, hold firmly to what you already know, strive to grow, deal with your drug problem if you're complaining, if it's an issue, deal with it, bring it to the Lord and ask him to help you. And finally, shine like stars, shine with the love of Jesus <coughs> to your family, to your friends and to your neighbours, especially this Christmas season. Just ask the Lord, what can I do? How can I shine like a star in my setting where you have placed me? Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's, let's just pray into what we've heard this morning. Let's just bow our heads and pray. So Lord, um, as we hear your word and receive your word today, we thank you that you give our lives meaning and purpose. That nobody here is an accident. Nobody here has got a meaningless, purposeless life. Lord, every one of us has something special from you, a gift that we can use to bless other people, to serve you, and, to, uh, and yeah, just to, to be a light that shines for you. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we thank you so much that that knowledge, Lord, that the darkness cannot overcome us. And Lord, sometimes we feel like it can, but the truth is it can't. So Father, help us to stand on your word of truth that the darkness cannot overcome us. It cannot extinguish the light you have put within us. And I just pray for every person here that that flame, that light of the Holy Spirit that is within will burn ever more brightly as we yield, as we surrender, as we give our hearts and our lives to you. Mm -hmm. So help us, Lord, we pray at this Christmas season. And maybe, Lord, you just want to put some little ideas in our hearts of, you could do this for the lady next door, or you could do this for your auntie, or your mum, or your dad, or your brother. Whatever it is you want us to do, Lord, give us willing and obedient hearts mm. to hear and uh, act upon your prompting. So we pray these things now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen.